that's right everybody, I went and got myself an anvil. This is a Harbor Freight anvil. Harbor Freight generally has not led me too astray. They have a tendency, they have a reputation, I should say, of making cheap, not good tools. In my opinion, most of the things I get from them is very good. And this is what's going to allow me to shape my Iron Man suit in a much uh, more precise way. Um, the thin stuff that I'm hammer forging out, cold forging, hence the, uh, the rubber mallet. an anvil is you use this to make flat stuff you generally have a rounded area either here or here or on one side or something like that to do rounded stuff that needs to be straight and then you have this long compounding thing that comes this way that you use that has all these different shapes in it that you use to shape things up here um, and then for whatever reason they decided to put powder coat on this and so I've just ground it off and now I'm trying to get rid of some of the pitting in it and try to get it a little bit more shiny and I'm actually going to try to make it a little sharper too because apparently that's a nice thing to have on an anvil I guess you allows you to get to smaller things more detail and I probably will appreciate doing that so I'm probably going to take some time all right, guys, I have got most of the pitting down on this. Like, I got it pretty clean here. I may need a little bit more cleanup, like right in here. Get that a little cleaner. Now what I'm going to... Here I took off even less than I thought I was going to take. As soon as I started touching it, I realized this was behaving differently than the corners and the uh, horn here. Um, it wasn't uh, getting any sparks with the angle grinder, and I think that is because this is hardened. So I just did a little bit, and I think maybe it cleaned it up a little bit. Um, there's these striations from the saw that cut this, uh, but they honestly don't... They look worse than they feel. Like you can see them running, but they look worse than they actually feel. They're very soft. Uh, I cleaned up the edges a little bit with uh, both uh, the grinder and the file. Like I said, I'm using this for aluminum. This thing is more than enough to use for aluminum. I've done uh, not that much forging, and I've never forged on an anvil before. Um, but now that I have this, I'm going to build a stand for it as well. Um, I may have to put a little small foundry, not a foundry, um, a forge in here at some point so I can make some iron if I ever feel so inclined. But for now, this will do fine. It's kind of honestly just setting in that I have, I'm going to have a, um, a anvil in my shop. It's always something that's always seemed like not necessarily what I wanted to do, forging. Um, so I've never really had a reason to get one, um, but it's something I've always found awesome. I've loved watching people work on them and YouTube and movies when I was young. I'm like, that's so cool. And it's just sitting in, sinking in that I got one. I love how it's named the Central Forged which is, uh, those of you who don't know, Harbor Freight, their branding is like Central Machinery and Central This and Central That. Well, I love Central Forge. That's super badass. Yeah, I'm excited.
the uh, base welded up here for this guy. So the next step for this is I'm gonna I've done very little work with brass, but I just love it. It's so pretty. Look at that big, nice lathe chamfer right there. So nice. Each of these legs are cut 10 degrees, um, parallel cuts on either side, and then uh, they're 19 inches long. Okay, so I off camera cut up these guys, and these are just little pieces of plate. If I was doing it super badass, I'd probably make them thicker, but this is all I have hanging around. And then, my favorite way to get things flat is to set them down exactly how they're going to be welded. Um, on, so my table's really flat, right? I took a lot, a lot of care to get this tabletop that I made very flat. So I put it on this nice flat metal table that I have. If you don't have a flat table, um, you can use a slab of concrete. A slab of concrete is nice if it's nice and flat. If you don't have a TIG welder, you can use a stick welder. You can buy one on Amazon for like 20 bucks. So there are ways to do this nice and cheap. This is something you really want to get into. I just have tools, so I'm using tools, of course. So I'm going to get these... Well guys, we're here. Um, it That sand took a lot longer than expected. I put it in all the legs. And uh, not sure I would have done that uh, if I knew how long it was gonna take, but this thing is just absolutely rock solid now. Super heavy. That sand, oh, oh God, that is solid as fuck. Um, let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the design here. Um, a, this is a uh, very much taken just from what Alex Steele did. Um, even down to the 10 degree taper angle on the legs. Uh, that was his suggestion. Um, the height comes up to like about the middle of my thigh, which was also um, something I noticed on Alex Steele's uh, thing. He's my favorite YouTuber who does like forging. Um, so I copied a lot of his stuff. Uh, the point of three legs is that you can kind of fuck up the, because with four you can get two that aren't on. With three legs, 
they're always all going to be on the ground. So you can put it on uneven surfaces. I've gotten, not to brag, but I've gotten pretty good at welding, um, so that's not a huge deal. Uh, I've been good at welding like tables. I've done a lot of those and stands and stuff like that. Um, but the other nice thing about having one is that this one, this is where you're doing most of your work, is either on the horn here or usually close to here, although you could use this entire thing. It seems people seem to use this because it's close to the horn. It's because of its proximity to the horn. If you're using the flat part, you usually use it right here, right here. So this area is getting the most work, right? So by having one leg here, you're not tripping over that leg as you smash on it. You can really get around this thing and not have any issues. So yeah, I think the only thing left to do now, guys, is go grab a hammer. I think that came out pretty good. Um, you know, this was not annealed, so it was very, it was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be to uh, to pound out like this. I usually anneal my aluminum before I go and try to forge it, um, so I did not do that, but uh, I was definitely able to put some power on there. And before I had literally stuff chucked into a vise and was trying to hit it on a vise, um, it was way too high. This is gonna be just absolutely lovely. There are absolutely no scratches um, or dents from this aluminum, though I did put a piece of TIG wire on the top of this thing, uh, just mild steel, 332nd TIG wire and hit it, and uh, I did leave dents up there, and then I had to grind them out. So, uh, you know, probably not the hardest um, anvil in the world for aluminum. It's gonna be more than okay. Unfortunately, I don't have a forge. Um, got the anvil before I got a forge, because I'm using it on aluminum, so I can't tell you how it's gonna hold up with like, you know, big old heavy blows on big hot chunks of steel. But I assume it's probably a softer than uh, non-anneal aluminum is, uh, glowing red hot steel. So if it can handle this, it can probably handle that. Anyway, this thing is really awesome. Oh, the only thing else I wanted to tell you guys about is uh, these feet. These feet are nice because they increase the footprint of this thing a little bit, so it's less likely to fall over. Um, and you can't do that by uh, bringing these out too far because apparently you'll get some like uh, resonance and oscillations because it'll bow more. You want these pretty much straight, you know, not be beyond that like 10 degree there. But these these spread out and make this a little bit less likely to top over. And then of course you can drill holes in them and you can bolt it into the concrete. And that's really what you should do with something like this. I might not do this at my shop right now, um, but I have the option to do it in the future. So that's pretty much how this guy works. Um, was really fun to build this. I'm really looking forward to using it. I'm gonna use it to build an Iron Man suit. Um, check out some of my other videos. There's plenty of them. I make a lot of videos. Um, if you're new to the channel and you just found this, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. Really helps me out. And if you can like this video, it uh, shows everyone else in the YouTube algorithm that they should also look at this video, um, which also helps me out. Eventually, I'd like to make money off my YouTube channel. So this is really fun. Um, I hope you guys liked watching me do it. Uh, I love these little projects where I just do like a small little thing. Um, and, and add a lot of value to my shop. I'm building an Iron Man suit. I've been working on that for over a year. So doing like a two day build, two days. This is a one day build. Of course, one day builds turn into two day builds. I, it's just how it is, ask Adam Savage. But um, this was just so much fun and I'm really excited. Thank you for watching. I love you and I'll see you guys next time.